It was a warm summer day during the COVID-19 pandemic, and I had decided to go for a walk to get some fresh air and exercise. As I strolled down the deserted road, I noticed a man on the opposite side of the street. At first, I didn't think much of it, assuming he was just going about his business. But as I continued to walk, I couldn't shake the feeling that he was following me. I turned around to see if he was still there. But to my shock, he had actually crossed the street and was now walking directly behind me. My heart raced as I tried to remain calm and think of what to do next. Should I speed up and try to outrun him? Should I confront him and ask him what he wants? Or do I just ignore him and hope for the best? Instead, I casually crossed the road, hoping that he would continue on his way and leave me alone. Thankfully, he did, and I breathed a sigh of relief. But my relief was short-lived. As I continued on my walk, I heard more footsteps approaching me from behind. But before I was able to even turn around to see who it was, a bag was thrown over my head and I felt someone's hand over my mouth. I struggled and screamed, but it was no use. The man had me in his grasp, and I had no idea where he was taking me. I felt myself being carried and thrown into what felt like the back of a van. My hands were tied up, and my mouth was duct taped shut. I tried to calm myself down and think of a way to escape, but then the van started moving. I could hear the muffled sounds of traffic outside. I tried my best to keep track of where we were going, but without the use of my sight, it was almost impossible. After what felt like an eternity, I started to hear sirens in the distance. The sirens got louder and louder until suddenly the van was brought to a swift halt. I heard a car door open, followed by the sound of police sirens whizzing by me. I tried to wriggle out of the bag over my head, and to my relief, I managed to do so. When I looked over the seats, I saw that we were on an empty country road. The police had obviously caused the van to stop and was now in pursuit of my captor. I waited anxiously for what felt like hours until finally another police car pulled up. This time it was a policeman and he casually opened the driver's seat door. I started screaming through the duct tape and to his shock he rushed over to save me. I was finally safe but the memory of that terrifying experience still haunts me to this day. The man was caught, but to this day, I'm always worried that whenever I'm alone, someone might just turn up and try to steal me away. As a social media influencer, I was used to having a large following and interacting with my fans online. I loved sharing my life with them and showing them glimpses into my world but I never expected that it would also attract a real-life stalker. It started with a knock on my door. At first, I thought it was just a fan who wanted to meet me in person, but when I opened the door, I saw a man I didn't recognise. He was staring at me with a blank expression, and I immediately felt uneasy. He asked me if I remembered him, but I had never seen this man before in my life. He lingered at my doorstep for a few more minutes before finally leaving. The next day, he came back, and the day after that. He would knock on my door and stand outside, just watching me through the peephole. I tried to ignore him, but it was almost impossible. I felt like I was being watched all the time. One day, I came home to find that my toothbrush was missing from its holder in the bathroom. I thought it was strange, but I didn't think too much of it as I was always losing things. But then, my hairbrush went missing, and I started to get worried. I began to lock my windows and doors every night, making sure that nobody could get in in case that is what was happening. A few days had gone by, and to my knowledge, nothing had been stolen. I remember I was about to do my laundry, and I went to grab the clothes from my floor. But this is when I noticed that my underwear had disappeared too. And this is when I knew for sure that someone was breaking into my house. I called the police, but they said there was nothing they could do. Without any real evidence, I was all on my own. So I decided to set up a security camera, hoping to catch the culprit in the act and show the police. 
It was a sleepless night, and as I laid in my bed, watching the footage on my phone, I couldn't believe what I saw. The man from before was breaking into my house, sneaking around and stealing my things. But what was worse was that when he entered my room while I was asleep, he would just stand there, watching me for hours, before then taking something and quickly leaving. I felt violated, exposed and terrified. I called the police again and showed them the footage. They were able to identify the man and found out that he was actually a convicted criminal on the sex offenders registry. I was lucky to have caught him before he could do anything worse, they said. It's been a few months since then, but I still can't shake off the feeling of being watched. I've installed more security cameras and increased the security in my home, but I still feel like I'm not safe. It's scary to think that someone could be watching you at any time, and I know I will never forget about this experience. I've always been a punctual person, and that day was no different. I was running late for school because of a car crash that had caused a roadblock. Desperate not to be late, I remembered a nearby alleyway that I could use as a shortcut. My dad had always warned me not to use that alleyway, but I thought he would understand that it was necessary for me to save time. He wouldn't want me to be late for school, right? As I walked down the alley, I heard footsteps behind me. I turned around to see a man who was clearly following me. He asked me where I was going and how old I was. His tone was unsettling, and I felt my stomach drop with fear. I picked up my pace, but the man kept getting closer. I could feel my heart racing, and I was trying to think of a way to escape. And then the man attempted to grab me. I managed to wriggle out of his loose grip and sprinted down the alleyway as fast as I could. I didn't stop running until I was far away from the alleyway, and I collapsed on the ground, gasping for air. I realised that I had narrowly escaped a dangerous situation, but my heart was still pounding with fear. From that day on, I never took shortcuts through dark alleyways or unfamiliar areas. I learned that my safety was more important than being on time. A few weeks went by, and I tried my best to forget about that frightening experience. But then, as I was walking to school, I noticed a man walking a few feet behind me yet again. I turned around and my heart sank when I realised that it was the same man who had followed me down the alleyway that day. I panicked, but I knew I had to stay calm and find another way out of the situation. I decided to take a different route to school, hoping that he would lose interest and leave me alone. But to my horror, the man kept following me. I realised that he was a stalker who had fixated on me. I went to the police station and reported the man. The officers took me seriously and investigated the situation. It turned out that the man had a history of stalking and harassment, and he was arrested before he could cause any more harm to me. I was relieved and grateful that the police took my report seriously and acted quickly to protect me, and I was also grateful that that man wouldn't be out there on the streets anymore, and that at least for now, everybody in my town would be safe. I was driving home late at night when my car suddenly broke down. I pulled over to the side of the road and tried to start it up again, but it was no use. That's when a woman appeared out of nowhere and offered to help me. At first, I was relieved to have some assistance, but as she started getting overly affectionate and touchy, I began to feel uneasy. This woman was at least twice my age, and she had this sinister smile on her face. Something about her was off, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Eventually, I managed to fix my car and thanked the woman for her help. As I got into my car and drove away, I suddenly remembered that I had left my car boot unlocked. I pulled over and quickly shut it, and then continued on my way. But after about five minutes of driving, I saw the woman's head pop up in my rearview mirror. She was smiling at me again and something about her expression made my blood run cold. I screamed and swerved my car, almost crashing. I pulled over and demanded that she get out of my car right now, but she wouldn't listen. She just kept smiling at me, 
her eyes fixed on me with a disturbing intensity. I realised then that I had made a huge mistake in trusting her, and I knew that I had to get away from her as quickly as possible. I jumped out the car and opened the car door, screaming for her to leave. At this point, her smile changed to a scowl, and she slowly creeped out of the car, staring deep into my eyes without breaking eye contact. I slammed the car door and jumped back into the driver's seat, throwing the car into first gear and speeding off down the road. I looked at my wing mirror and saw she was still standing on the side of the road just watching me. Thankfully, she didn't follow me, but for weeks afterwards, I was haunted by the memory of that woman's smile in my rearview mirror. I've never been so frightened in my life. I'll never forget that feeling of fear that I had experienced, and I always make sure to be more careful about who I accept help from in the future. I never thought much about walking home alone at night, until the night the streetlights went out. There was a power outage, and I was leaving a friend's house late at night and started to make my way home. The street was usually well lit, but as I walked, I noticed the streetlights were flickering above me. Suddenly, they went out completely, leaving me in total darkness. I froze in fear, my heart pounding, and I started to hear footsteps behind me. I knew I wasn't alone. I started to run, but I couldn't see where I was going, it was too dark. I stumbled and fell, scraping my knees on the rough pavement. I screamed for help, but no one answered. The footsteps got closer, and I could hear someone breathing heavily. I knew I was in danger, and I had to get away somehow. I got up and started running again, my legs pumping as fast as they could, trying to ignore the agony that my knee was in. The footsteps were still chasing me, and I could hear the person getting closer and closer. I finally saw a faint light in the distance and headed towards it hoping it was a safe place to hide. The person chasing me was now breathing down my neck, and I knew I had to do something drastic. I turned around and punched the man as hard as I could. They stumbled backward, giving me the chance to run away. When I finally made it to the light, which turned out to be a convenience store, I ran inside, gasping for breath. I told the store clerk what had happened, and he immediately called the police. The police arrived quickly and searched the area, but unfortunately, they couldn't find anyone. I was left shaken and scared, knowing that the stalker was still out there somewhere. To this day, I'm still scared. They never found him, but I never walk alone at night, and hopefully, that will be enough to keep me safe. I've always been somewhat of a naive girl, especially in my teenage years. I remember my dad used to say that I would have trusted a serial killer if he smiled at me. Well, one hot evening, I think I was about 13 at the time, I was walking down a long street on my way to the summer fair. I could hear the sounds of the carnival games and smell the sugary aroma of cotton candy in the air. It was supposed to be a night of fun and excitement, but little did I know that it would turn into a nightmare. As I walked, I noticed a man following me. He was tall and thin, with dark hair and piercing eyes. He looked like he was in his mid-thirties maybe, and something about him made me feel uneasy. I quickened my pace, hoping to shake him off, but he kept following me. His footsteps echoed behind me, and I could hear his heavy breathing. I tried to turn around, but he always seemed to be just out of sight. I thought I was being paranoid, so I tried to ignore him and just enjoy the fair, but as the night wore on, the man became more aggressive. He started to get closer to me, and I could feel his hot breath on my neck at certain times. I turned around to confront him, but he grabbed me by the wrist and pulled me into an alleyway. I screamed, but no one could hear me over the sounds of the fireworks. He forced me to the ground, and I struggled to get away, but he was just too strong. He put his hand over my mouth to muffle my screams and started to undo my socks. I was terrified, and my mind raced as I tried to come up with a plan to escape. I knew I had to fight back, so I bit into his hand as hard as I could. He screamed in pain and let go of me instinctively, giving me the chance to run away. 
I sprinted back to the main street and found a police officer who helped me get home safely. I never saw that stalker again, but the memory of that night haunted me for years to come, and still does. It was a harsh lesson in the dangers that lurked in the world, and I vowed to always be vigilant and aware of my surroundings. I was walking to soccer practice one day, as my dad was busy working and couldn't give me a ride. The route was a familiar one, but as I walked, a car pulled up beside me. At first, I thought maybe the driver needed directions or something, but then he started talking to me in a strange, unsettling way. I asked him to leave me alone, and at first he was polite about it, but then his tone turned angry. Suddenly, he harshly pulled his car up just in front of me and jumped out. Instinctively, I started running away as fast as I could. I didn't know where I was going, but I just knew I had to get away from him. Only God knew what he was planning to do to me. I ran down an empty street, jumping over bushes and fences. Eventually, I saw a woman in her garden, and I quickly jumped over her fence to hide, but the woman had already seen me. She asked me who I was and why I was in her garden. I explained the situation to her, and she immediately took me inside her house and called the police. As I sat in the woman's living room, waiting for the police to arrive, I was shaking with fear. I didn't know who that man was or what he wanted from me, but I knew that he was dangerous. When the police arrived, they took my statement and promised to do everything they could to find the man who had stalked me. I was grateful to the woman who had taken me in and protected me, and I knew that without her help, I might not have made it out of that situation, alive. A few weeks later, the police told me that they'd found the guy, and they'd arrested and sent him to prison. I was so relieved that, from that day forward, I was always careful to be aware of my surroundings. I knew that there were dangerous people out there who might be watching and waiting for their next victim, and all I know is... I don't want to be one of them. This is a story about my cousin, Emily, and the day she was almost a victim of human trafficking. In her earlier years, she always loved to run. In fact, I think at the time she was training for a marathon. She said she loved the feeling of pushing herself to the limit and the adrenaline rush that came with it even if it meant running in the dark and cold days of winter. One evening, Emily set out on her usual jogging route, wearing her warmest clothes and equipped with her trusty running shoes. As she ran, she noticed a shadowy figure following her, but she shrugged it off, thinking it was just another runner out for a late-night workout. But as she turned onto a deserted street, the figure suddenly grabbed her from behind and Emily's heart raced with fear. She struggled to break free, but the man's grip was too strong, and he dragged her into a dark alleyway. As he pinned her against the wall, Emily could feel his hot breath on her face, and his cold, menacing hands roaming all over her body. She screamed for help, but no one came to her aid. The man then whispered in her ear, telling her that he had been watching her for weeks, and that he knew everything about her. Emily tried to reason with him to plead for her life, but he only laughed in response. He said that he had been stalking her, learning her routine, and that he had been waiting for the perfect moment to strike. For what felt like hours, Emily was trapped in that dark alleyway, with her stalker's words echoing in her mind. She tried to stay calm, to think of any way out, but the man seemed to be one step ahead of her at every turn. Finally, when she had all but given up hope, she heard a siren in the distance. It was the police, responding to her earlier cries for help. The stalker heard it too, and in a moment of desperation, he released Emily and fled into the night. Emily was left alone, trembling and traumatised, with the realisation that she had been stalked by a dangerous predator, who could have taken her life at any moment. She never forgot that terrifying experience, and never took her safety for granted again and especially never went out jogging when it was late at night. Thank you for listening. I'll see you in the next video.